Hello and welcome to Let's Play Skyhaven. You're here with Ordnath, and today we're going to play Skyhaven, a small indie game by uh, Real Welders. Uh, it was originally released in November of 2020 as an early access, and according to the latest development map, expected to be completion uh, completed around the end of 2021. Uh, available on Steam. So today we'll just uh, go in and start a new game. Uh, so you've got a range of eras you can pick from here, uh, from 1916 uh, through to the turbo standards of 1950. Uh, we'll make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves by reducing the starting balance, but we'll leave the daily history uh, duration. So every day worth of play is two years worth of time passing. For this first uh, episode, we'll see how long exactly we take, but the intention is to get a good mail and cargo uh, set up going so that we've got a good basis from which to launch the rest of our uh, our airport uh, uh, future with. So this era here in the beginning is dominated by small propeller planes and mail and cargo flights. Uh, you do have some passenger flights with rich travellers, but not uh, a lot. Uh, so let's get into it. So. Look, in terms of first making a successful airport, you've got quite a large build area available to you. Uh, you don't need anywhere near this amount at the start. Um, and the real limitation here is how many airplanes you can have uh, in your airport and what really is allowed in terms of slots of takeoff and landing. Uh, so we don't want to overbuild and, and spend a lot of money because all of these items, as you can see here, cost so much per day to keep up. Um, regardless of, of whether you can fill them or not. So if you've got lots of grass ramps, you've spent a lot of money and you don't necessarily require them. So we'll start off by placing a runway. And we'll put that there. And then we need some uh, entry and exit strips. Now you can put them all in the, you could put just one in the middle, but that's obviously pretty inefficient, which is why they don't do it in reality as well. Uh, and then we're gonna put down around about five of these grass ramps so that we've got some ability to um, uh, service these aircraft. Now in terms of setting this up um, you just need to know that the uh, the, the planes come from uh, the long side to the short side so if you want your planes um, uh, coming in a particular direction you just need to orient these in, in a direction that suits. Uh, to make this a little bit easier what we'll do is just set up our taxiways first, give ourselves a bit of room. Uh, so we'll give ourselves around about 50 metres from the starting point. We can go right across here and this snaps very nicely into place. And then from there what we can do is set up our, our ramps for our aircraft. So we'll um, go through and do that now. So I'll leave a little bit of room which you'll see why we might do that later. If you hold down the shift key so we can place a few, we'll place down five ramps. And then again, we need some more taxiway on the other side. So we've got our incoming plane this way and then we'll have our planes go out this way. Make it nice and short as possible. Uh, so we've now got our five ramps available to us. We've got our runway um, and then we've got our connecting taxiways. This roadway in the middle is now where we need to connect for services to come in and out. So we'll pick our grass road here and place a length out in this direction. And then we can place another length out here. And we do need to connect it to the world so that we can get deliveries of various goods and trucks. And so now we need to set up the facilities. So in the early days, we just have uh, cargo and um, fuel barrels. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier for later on, we will place a, a road section perhaps in each direction this way so that we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a T here to work with as we place down our facilities. Uh, so we'll start off with our fuel barrel stock. I'll put that just available here. We'll grab our cargo storage that opposite. Oh, we want to sit there. We might put that next to it here. And then we do need an office, which we need for our research. Now the office doesn't need to really be anywhere near the rest of the airport. 
same point. Hogging up our about to be busy air site. And uh, now we need to set these up so that they're able to service each of these. So the, there's a few long ways of doing it. There's a short way of doing it, but you'll see there's this very handy button here, which is linked to all available ramps. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll do the same with our fuel barrel stock. And then we need vehicles to do this servicing. Uh, so no need to go crazy just yet. So we'll buy one. We only have one, which is the busing ZU 500. Uh, and this essentially gives you its vital statistics. So this is how much it can carry. So 750, uh, I don't believe it's barrels worth of fuel, but, but let's call it liters, uh, what it costs and then what its running cost is, even though it says maintenance, it's really its running cost per game hour. So we will buy one of those. And then we need to do the same with the cargo storage. Uh, it's got two vehicle slots to begin with, which is kind of handy, capacity, capacity of 50. And again, so our initial uh, busing uh, ZU 500 starts with 10 cargo slots. So just before we get going, there's a couple of other things we need to do. Uh, the first one is we want to start some research. So you start off with a base load of 25 workflow points, which are like research or administrative points that you can use for different things. Uh, we could use a range of things here. It's um, uh, If we look through, you've got airplane services, which kind of improve uh, what you can do with the aircraft on the map. So this is things like maintenance, uh, lo uh, logistics for loading cargo, as well as fuel. Passenger services, so this opens up passenger airlines and, and the ability to service passengers, which we don't have yet. Personnel essentially boosts your staff and how they work. Construction moves you forward in terms of being able to use tarmac asphalt type uh, uh, materials, so bigger and better runways and landing apron and ramps. And then office work, which um, allows you to get into different components of the game. So this top line really is around boosting the workflow number, which is really handy for your research. And then down here, this starts opening up better contracts, uh, flight scheduling rather than ad hoc flights, etc. So uh, a range of different things there. Also up here is kind of hidden away, which is not in the main part of the game, is the number of uh, clerks that you can have work for you. So uh, the more clerks you have, the more of these research points you have, and if at all possible, you want to max this out. So even though they're very expensive, um, quite expensive per day, uh, that added workflow is what really pushes you forward in terms of the game, so getting these things done. I like to start off with office furniture. So this provides comfortable cha tables, chairs, and cabinets, um, uh, better than old workbenches from the workshop, so your clerks can work more efficiently. And this provides a 5% workflow boost forever. Um, so you can imagine having these early on is quite powerful. So we'll go ahead and, and start with office furniture with our research. And we will hire, because we've got the money, the maximum number of clerks um, or clerks. And uh, that enables us with 225 research. So a lot of this research will move along very quickly. Um, the other thing that we probably need early on is we've only, you only get given, an, even though the, uh, the cargo um, storage comes with a full um, set of cargo. Unfortunately, fuel storage only comes with uh, a thousand of its 7,000. So in this early part of the game, you can only uh, purchase uh, fuel ad hoc. So if you click down here on the fuel management button, you go into this tab here, supply management. Can, there's a button down here called new contracts so it's a few clicks away but you go in here into new contracts and you've got a range of oil companies you can use now the larger and bigger ones only do take or pay or if they do do instantaneous they require large minimum volumes and if you don't have storage for it that's all just wasted uh, so you really only have the choice of these two and if you look at it in terms of a cost point of view for 5,000 um, 5,000 litres, uh, it's more expensive for durable oil company rather than union. Uh, so we might as well use the union and we only have the option of instant. So as soon as we sign the contract, they'll come and do one delivery and that's all that you get. Uh, so we've got room for 6,000. So we will spend our $2,520 and sign the contract. And we will have our P 
fuel delivered in around about 30 minutes, which is shown by this icon here. So I think we're ready to go and we'll press play and see if we don't start getting some ad hoc flights. So at this early stage, you only have ad, ad hoc flights available. Um, so what will happen is we'll see some flights appear down in this corner after a time and then we can allocate them to one of our ramps. So I'll be back as soon as that happens. Okay, so we've got our first flight here coming in and it's a Farman F50. Uh, it's requiring 367 litres of fuel and five of cargo. Now, not all of your ramps are made equal. So obviously the grass ramp that's further away requires longer for each of our trucks to come out and service. So these sort of mixed ones here uh, it's better to have it a closer ramp. So if you look uh, here nice and closely, these are kindly numbered ramps 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So it'd be great to have it on ramp 1. So to accept it on ramp 1, all we have to do is click on the accept button. The other thing to note down here is this uh, income and fine piece. So if you accept a, fl a flight and it's not serviced within any sort of reasonable time, and I believe you get unlimited time anyway for these ad hoc flights, uh, there's a penalty for, for them being unable to land or uh, for some other reason. But to be honest, I've never got one of them, uh, a penalty for one of these. The other thing is, what is it that you're actually going to get out of this? So this $502 says this is quite a valuable flight compared to the one above it, which is 204 And as we get lots and lots more flights, it'll be good for us to ensure that we, um, we take the most lucrative ones. So we'll go ahead and accept that flight on ramp one. And... We've got another one here that's worth 502, so we should prioritise that over just the cargo flight here. So we'll put that onto ramp two. And we'll speed that up to see how it goes. And you'll see our little, um, our little cargo truck is ready to go, ready to receive, as will be our fuel truck. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll accept a bunch of flights and we'll move forward in the game. And we'll join back once we've serviced a few flights. Alright, so our office furniture has been uh, researched, so that's good news. And so now we're going and pick something else. Now there's a few different things we could or uh, do, but this flight scheduling is pretty critical to do early because what it does is it allows us to have contracts and to, uh, to have scheduled flights. So flights on request are a dead end. To reach a new level of efficiency, a fundamentally different approach is required. Trains have been running on schedules for years, so you should follow that example. So we'll go ahead and research that. Um, perhaps while we're here, what you can see here is we'll just have a, a look at what we can, what information we can find on a particular aircraft. So I've just clicked on this uh, Farman 50, which we've taken into Grass Ramp 1, and you can see here where it's up to. So the parking service is literally it just sitting there. Uh, there's an unload and a loading of cargo and a fueling. You can see because we had quite empty ramps, the trucks were essentially ready to go. So the fueling happened straight away as did the unloading. And now once the loading of cargo has been completed, then that plane will be ready to be turned out. So we'll just service a few more aircraft until we have scheduling available. Okay, so we're starting to get to a point where our poor old trucks are not able to keep up. So you can see this one here has been fueled, but it hasn't had its cargo unloaded or loaded. And even if we look at this one, I think we might have a few here that are still waiting on cargo. So remedy to this is to purchase a further cargo truck. So we'll go in now and buy a second ZU500. And that will hopefully help us out. Okay, so flight scheduling is complete. Um, so we'll just do a couple of things now. First of all, we will go in and do a little bit more um, uh, pick our next research option. So look, there's a few things we could do here. So we could start doing some um, 
logistics here. So you've got advanced barrel logistics, which gives you a bigger fuel stockpile and fueling center. Same with uh, loading docks, so you can get bigger cargo capacity. The other one that's really interesting is air traffic control. So this is pretty important because this essentially allows you to serve a significant uh, number more ramps and planes. So if we look at it at the moment, up here you can see the number of operations allowed uh, per one landing or takeoff time slot, which is 15 minutes, is two. So if we get an air traffic controller, we can move that up to three. So we can take 50% um, more aircraft. It also allows us to have up to 20 planes in the airport rather than the 10. So at the moment we've got five out of 10 in here and that might seem like we've got room for more. But if we accepted a lot and we had a lot waiting to take off, we could get up to that 10 even with our five ramp slots. So typically this, uh, this available number of airplanes in airport needs to be double the number of ramps that you have. So we can get that up to 20. So from a research point of view, I think we will go for air traffic control. So we will go ahead and build, uh, research the wooden PC tower. All right. And then the other thing that we've unlocked with our scheduling is the ability to take contracts. So rather than have these aircraft moving in and out ad hoc, uh, we'll be able to schedule um, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, contracts. So if you go here down into the contracts window, and unfortunately it starts on the existing contracts. You need to click across to this airlines tab. And then we've got a couple of different uh, options. So we've got the Royal Postmaster's Office and you can see here it gives you a range of information. Uh, it tells you what the airline type is. So this one's domestic, we haven't signed them yet. Uh, they're tier, so it's not applicable, but as you keep moving up, uh, you get uh, higher tiers of, of airlines. So uh, sort of their grade, I guess. How they feel about you? So we've serviced a few RPOs or uh, Royal Postmaster Office planes already. So you can see we've already got a rating above 50% and we've obviously serviced one or two for Smith and Brothers delivery. Uh, so they're a little bit better. Uh, it tells you uh, scheduled flights. Uh, so we don't have any scheduled at the moment. Uh, what their airline size is. So you can see here uh, the, the four different types. So Royal Postmaster Office only has the smallest two and the Smith Brothers delivery has the next size up but not the largest. They come much later in the game. Uh, it also has here what their passenger type is but again um, these are both delivery services so they don't have a passenger type. So what we're going to do is go ahead and we'll take um, both of these and sign them on. And then if we go back into the contracts we can have a look at what contracts are available. Now you can see here that the Royal uh, Postmaster's Office uh, has uh, a flight, uh, a contract here available. So this says what the contract is, so it's available. How many flights it expects in a day, and then how many days in a row, this cycle count, how many days in a row it expects that to be fulfilled. So in this instance it's got three flights and they're expected to be fulfilled in one day. Uh, and they're light, so they're, they're the smallest size that we've got. Uh, they're a propeller, so at this stage they're all propellers. And then the, the turnaround time, this is the default turnaround time, but we can change that, which, uh, which will help us. And then you've also got the fueling, what it requires in terms of services. So there's a fueling service required and a cargo service. If you then have a look here, there's a signing bonus. So for taking on the contract, this is how much you get paid. And then this is the expected average income per flight. So you can see we've got some quite lucrative flights here in terms of fuel expected versus fuel and cargo. And this one's a lot cheaper. And the penalty, this is what happens if you fail to fulfill the contract. So you can sign any one of these. So let's sign one of those up now. So we'll pick this one here because it's got both fueling and cargo, which is nice and balanced. Uh, and it's got five flights. So we'll sign that one up now. And now that we've signed them up, we have to now go and schedule them. So we go to the scheduling window. Now in the scheduling window, you need to uh, uh, dedicate a ramp uh, to enable that to happen. So we'll dedicate ramp one because it's the closest and we know it's going to be done. Uh, and then we will put our, our, uh, our flight down here. Now you can see here, if we do it any time within the next uh, three or four hours, it will uh, default to coming the following day.
However, if we put it a few hours out or we have time a few few hours out, we are able to land it today. So we'll go ahead and land uh, these ones today and we'll make a second add a second uh, ramp available for these flights. And you can see up the top here some interesting bits of information. So remember we said we can only have so many operations per takeoff and landing zone. Well, this one's showing that we can only have, uh, we're having two in this 15 minute slot and two in this. You can see if I move it back and forth, it changes to a one and when they overlap, it's a two. And we've got a limit of two. So if we then go and uh, try and add a further one over the same time, it'll say that the slots uh, limit has been reached. And for these particular ones, it wants to stagger them by 30 minutes. Or, or you can see because we've got the overlap then of the next slot, we have to stagger it by 30 minutes to fit this flight in, uh, which is what we'll do now. And we hit confirm so that we've got the flight schedule. And now we'll head out of this. Now we could sign some more, um, which we, we will do now. Um, however, most of those will get scheduled to the following day. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Uh, so we'll pick this one here, which is just the fueling requirement because it has the highest average income. Uh, so we'll sign that and we'll go back to the scheduling window. Now we'll use the same ones here because we want to still be able to use these two for the rest of the day just to uh, bring in ad hoc uh, flights. Uh, so we'll try and start these ones straight off in the morning. And we'll place all of those down here and fill up our schedule as best we can. And we'll confirm those. Now there's a bit of an option here. Uh, this spot is obviously empty on uh, ramp two and we've got another empty spot here on ramp three. Um, we could fill this up with the remainder. However, uh, ramp three we're going to, we might try and utilize tomorrow uh, because tonight we'll probably get some more options around contracts. So that's all locked in now. So we can go and head back on out. We'll leave this not so good contract here and we'll keep the time running. And what we'll do is let a few more planes land, but I'll just fast forward until we get to a point where we've got our scheduled flights coming in. So what you'll notice here is that um, the ramps that we've put over to scheduled are now no longer available for um, these incoming ad hoc flights. Uh, so we've only got ramps four and five, so we want to keep making some money off those. So we'll just cherry pick these uh, more lucrative flights as they come in. Okay, so our air traffic control is finished. Now, I won't build that air traffic control just yet. Uh, we'll wait until we get to overnight time. Well, that's the right time to do all these sorts of things. Uh, but what we might try and do is get ready to upgrade our uh, refueling and upgrade our loading docks just so that we're able to cater for the higher volume we're expecting once we sign all these contracts. Uh, so we'll go with advanced barrel logistics. So it enables us to multi, uh, do multi-vehicle refueling, which is really handy. So we'll go ahead and research that. Okay, now we've gotten to a point where uh, we're really running out of cargo and we're getting quite low on fuel again. So it's time to purchase some more cargo. So I'm going to go into the cargo management and again, here under the supply management, we can go to a new contract. And the only one that we can do instantaneously is news air transporting and we'll buy the full amount, even though it might be a touch wasteful, we're really running low. So go ahead and get the full lot so that we're filled up. Uh, also with the fuel, we could probably use another 5,000 litres of fuel. So we will go ahead, and as we did before with Union Oil Company, uh, we will go ahead and order 5,000 litres of fuel so that we don't run out of that. And we finished our advanced barrel logistics. Uh, so as I said before, we'll move on to make sure our cargo is also able to be upgraded. So we'll go ahead and enable ourselves to have bigger cargo facilities so we can build them this evening. All 
All right, so we have reached 1500. So at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we should see the first of our scheduled flights uh, coming in. Uh, so it won't be long before I think we'll see one on ramp one. And as you can see, our wonderful little uh, busing Z, uh, busing uh, ZU500 is waiting here to take away the uh, the goods or unload the goods from our scheduled flight. And here it is. So you can see here, it'll be slightly different when this um, this plane comes in. I just love these uh, these little service vehicles going to, to service our uh, plane. So what you can see here now is that the unloading and the fueling has occurred. However, you'll notice that the parking service now has a counter on it. So when we negotiated the contract, we allowed an hour and a half of parking time or servicing time, which means as long as you perform the servicing within an hour and a half, uh, you won't get penalised on the contract. However, what it does mean is it ensures that this aircraft takes up this space for an hour and a half. Um, so you can uh, negotiate the contract and actually make the servicing period shorter as long as you're confident you can meet it, um, which means that you can turn around a lot more um, planes in that time. So um, when we negotiate our next contract, we might have a little look at that. Um, and then if you look across here, here's our second one that's come in now uh, for that contract. And you can see here it's got its schedule on the left hand side. So we're supposed to land at 3 p.m. Uh, so it only finally got to the um, uh, to the ramp by 25 past, just because it had to get down the runway and it had to wait for the other plane to land. And then it's scheduled to take off at 4:30. And this tells you how long it's spent on the ramp, which is that limit that we talked about of an hour and a half. So that's how scheduled flights work. Uh, so what I might do now is uh, we've got a few more scheduled flights or two more scheduled flights to go today uh, but I might fast forward until either our research finishes or we get through uh, to the evening and then explain a little bit about how to set up overnight. Okay so now we've got our reinforced loading docks. Uh, the question is what to do next. So we've got our basic uh, sets of logistics here, our air traffic control, which is great. So we've got a few other options. We could either start getting ready to to build, uh, I guess, tarmac uh, type paving. We could have a go at enabling our contract negotiations so that we could uh, negotiate contracts a little bit better. Um, flexible fuel contracts so that we can put in permanent contracts. Um, but I think at this stage, it's probably better just to improve. Um, you know, as I said, we're going to set up a, a strong uh, cargo and refueling uh, service. So we might go down the path of um, just finishing off those bits and pieces. So uh, we've got a couple here. So you can, uh, we'll start off, I think, with just cargo handling instruction. So this enables us to get a small boost of 3%. Um, to our cargo transfer, so we'll do that. That'll be finished fairly shortly, after which I will do the fuel personnel training. So we'll get through to that. Okay, we're about to hit 1900 or 7 p.m. and we've just finished uh, fueling personnel training. Now, so let's just deal with our research next. Um, as I said, I'm going to continue to go down the, um, uh, the path of just improving our cargo handling and our um, fueling. So I'm going to go after barrel trolleys next uh, so it improves our, our uh, warehouse productivity. So we'll go ahead and research. Uh, that and I won't stop for the hoist and winch for cargo storage, so we'll do that now. Um, but now that we've hit um, 1900, a couple of things happen. 
So at 7 p.m., uh, because there's no night operations back in 1916, uh, the airport closes down, so you can't take any more ad hoc flights. Uh, but it's also a wonderful time to top up all our stores and do any rearranging of the uh, airport that we want. So we'll just fast forward a little bit here until the last of these planes takes off into the dark. I hope they're, uh, they've got a, an airport they can land at somewhere. Um, but it does empty out your airport at this stage uh, to enable you to uh, move on. So we've now gotten rid of everything from the airport. So now's a good chance to do some reorganizing. Um, so what we'll do now is fast forward the time uh, because we do pay for things every hour we have them. And I want to replace this um, fuel barrel stock with our now larger um, large fuel barrel stock. So we want to be able to do that. And we've now got an air cargo warehouse. So we want to put that in as well. But of course it costs um, a certain amount per day. So once we get past 12 midnight, we'll put those in. Similarly, we've got the wooden air traffic control tower. So again, we want to put that in, but it costs a certain amount per day. So we'll wait until we get past midnight. Uh, so that brings me to sort of research. So a bit of research is going to pass as we keep going forward. Um, so what I'm going to do is get our paper trays next because that'll just give us a bit more efficiency around our total workflow, uh, which will be handy. So once we've completed uh, what we're doing at the moment um, with regards to improving our warehouse and our barrel trolleys, uh, I'll then move over and get the paper trays done. And then if we've got time after that, I might get contract negotiations done because that'll help us as we're going to start negotiating contracts overnight. So. That'll be the order, but I'll fast forward now until we get to a point um, where we are building a bit more airport. Okay, so we've hit midnight. Um, and this, uh, when we hit midnight, we get a daily report. So on the expense side of things, we've spent about 27, 28,000, 8,600 of that was on construction. So not really operating costs and uh, 1,300 on vehicles, so about 10 grand. And then we made a profit of about 18,000 or made revenue of uh, about 18,000. So if you take out those, uh, those sort of capital costs, we're actually reasonably close. And as we get more contracts, that should be a bit better. The other part now that we've uh, crossed over 12 o'clock midnight, uh, we can do the building of those uh, different facilities that we talked about before. and we'll get new contracts. So let's start off with the facilities we want to build. Uh, so the first thing to build is our air traffic control tower. So we might put this again, it doesn't really matter where it is. Um, but for the sake of making our airport look somewhat like an airport, we'll put it near near the runway. Uh, so that's our air traffic control tower. And then we want to build our new um, larger facilities for uh, doing the, the uh, cargo handling, so the air cargo warehouse and large fuel barrels. So with the large fuel barrel stock, uh, we might just put it over here. And then with the air cargo warehouse, we want to put it over this side. So um, as you can see, we've got a bit more area in which to work. Now, Unfortunately, with the existing cargo storage and the existing fuel barrel stock, if you don't use what's in there and you just delete them, then you lose uh, the fuel barrels and the cargo that you have in there. So we want them to bleed out. But what we don't want them to do um, is end up um, servicing from those two locations. So the first thing we'll do is we'll relocate the vehicles. So this is why you do it at night because you have to be on parking to relocate it. And you just go into we're going to go into the fuel barrel stock and we'll just click here on relocate vehicle and it gives us the choice to relocate to the large fuel barrel stock which we'll click so now that one's gone and with the cargo stock we'll do exactly the same thing to these two vehicles to reallocate them to the cargo warehouse now that we've moved those vehicles you can do a couple of things you can close it down and and then de delete it. So once you've closed it down, you can delete it. Unfortunately, that'll get rid of or you'll lose all of um, the fuel that's already stored here. Uh, so we won't quite do that yet. 
However, what you do want to do is, uh, before we get to the next day, link these facilities as we did before to the associated the nearby ramps. If you forget to do that, it'll keep trying to draw from these empty or these facilities with no vehicles and it won't work. So now you can see they're correctly linked. Uh, the, the grass ramp is quite correctly linked to the new facility, so it'll use those. When these facilities run out of cargo um, and run out of fuel, they will draw from these other ones, and then once those are empty, we will delete it. So that handles the replacement of those facilities and the air traffic control tower. And the next thing we want to do is sign up the contracts for the new day. So if we look across at airlines, we'll see if there's any new airlines. And as we look here, uh, we see a couple of different changes. Number one is uh, Smith and Brothers Delivery have now got some pas passenger types. So they may offer some uh, passenger types. And then we've got two new uh, companies. So there doesn't appear to be any sort of penalty for just continuously signing up um, companies so that you've got more options as to what to supply and do. Uh, so we'll go ahead and sign up the aircraft transport and travel. And we'll also sign up the Royal Aviation Company. So we've got a few more contracts to choose from. And then we have a look here at what we've got. And you'll see that most of these can't be signed um, because they require passenger services of different types. And we haven't um, uh, researched those yet. However, um, we still want to, to continue to move forward with our, uh, our cargo service. Uh, and we want to try and fill as many of these slots with um, scheduled flights as possible because they, they do tend to be the most lucrative. So what we'll do is we will now sign up uh, this smaller contract and we will go ahead and schedule those flights. So you can see here, these are the remaining flights that we had scheduled yesterday and we will schedule the remainder of these flights. Here in their two hour slots, and we may get some more, more contracts available to us as we move through the night. So we'll just fast forward and see if that will happen. So now, if it's seven o'clock in the morning, um. As we haven't got any more contracts for this grass ramp, this third grass ramp, what we'll do is just turn that back across to on demand. And now we'll move forward and see if we can't deplete the rest of this uh, cargo and deplete this fuel source um, so that we can then uh, delete these older, smaller cargo storage and fuel barrel stock. So we'll go ahead and fast forward and do that now. Okay, so as you can see, we've successfully depleted most of the fuel. So what we'll do now is we'll click on the fuel barrel storage, the original one, and we're just going to turn it off and click remove and voila, it's gone. And so now what we can do is order some more fuel. Now we have 10,000 liters available for us now. Um, so we can go ahead and order 10,000. And now we'll do exactly the same with the cargo storage. Okay, so we've now gotten to the point where we're ready with uh, some further research. I've completed contract negotiations now, which will help us out. So there's a range of different things we can do here to improve, um, improve further the service. So we could have a go now and consider getting into airline services, uh, but we'll save that for our next episode. Uh, so what we'll do is, as I said, we were trying to optimize our um, cargo service first. So we'll go ahead and we will get some driver training uh, so that we can get some better um, vehicles that carry more cargo, more barrels of oil. And then after we've done that, I'll continue down this personnel path 
with uh, for the cargo warehouse and the barrel stock um, some different boosts that we can use for that As we go, you'll see it is tempting to take some of these poorer contracts. Um, however, you do notice that after a time, you do get a good one. And the reality is when you're only making $26, you only need one of the $500 contracts um, to be much more worth the wait. So uh, a little bit of patience is required when you're kind of picking those. Now, as you see, we're getting close to the end of the, uh, the cargo left in this cargo store. So I'm quite tempted to delete that um, now and just live with the fact that we're going to get another load of cargo. Um, so I'll just continue the research as I said before. And once we've deleted this cargo and got into the evening, we'll hopefully get some more contracts and we'll be able to um, set up a good set of contracts and I'll show you about how you can negotiate those a little bit better. Okay, so we've just finished the last of our um, personnel. Now we can get these kerosene ramps, which improve the ramp service, but you don't really need ramp service until you've got passengers. Um, so we won't, um, we won't uh, push towards that. Um, so we could open up ramp services now, but we'll leave that for another time. What we might do is take the opportunity to do the next buff of our actually what we'll do is we'll do the flexible fuel contracts so the flexible fuel contracts enable us to have routine fuel contracts and uh, whilst we won't do it in this episode we can have a look at how you manage your supply chain so that you don't have to con constantly remember to buy fuel so we'll research that you'll notice that because i've maxed out my office even though we're not making a lot of money uh, we are going through the re research very quickly so hopefully i'll come back uh, when we've uh, we hit night time. So we've now emptied our cargo storage, so we can go ahead and get rid of that, the old one, and we'll have to top up the new one quickly. Again, uh, we could pick our regular amount, but we haven't set up our schedules yet, so we'll just go ahead and buy um, instantaneously some. So we've now hit the end of the day and as you can see if you look at it from a, a construction point of view after construction we're actually making quite a tidy profit um, so not too bad got a, got a few thousand extra in the bank which will help us with the next small part um, you'll see that we've got a whole set of new contracts so we'll go through that shortly um, but just while we were fast forwarding I did go and start Express Air Cargo which opens up some better cargo contracts. So anyway, we'll go into the contracts window and see what we've got. So you'll see now that we've got um, many more better contracts and we'll now go through the process of uh, locking in as many of these as possible because what we do want to do is set up a good strong schedule. You'll also notice that because we've already completed a set of contracts for these two companies, we now have much more cycles and many more options. So Usually you need to complete a few contracts first to get those cycles up. So we've got basically a week worth um, of cargo and fueling contracts sitting here that we can now use. So again, we'll pick from the top. Um, and if we click sign, rather than sort of clicking through and just signing on, there's a few things that you can do here to optimize the contract. So if we're really gonna go hard at making sure we can service uh, these quite quickly um, and make a lot of money, what you can do here is uh, make the turnaround time very small uh, and we can buy some more trucks and improve the speed of our facilities. So this will be the last part of the episode. 
but we'll make it an hour so we'll only give ourselves an hour to service these rather than 90 minutes it means the penalty is a little bit higher um, but it does mean that we can actually jam these more in the schedule you'll notice too that we can service these all day so we can put these anywhere in the schedule um, so I'll hit sign up now and then we go across to our schedule window and we can now book them in so we've got a bit of a clean slate to work with here uh, so we will go ahead and put these in now you notice these are crammed much closer together because we've got the 30 minutes back so you can fit a lot more in just means you need to be a bit more careful on the amount of slots that you've got so we've got three slots with our air traffic control tower um, but it does mean we'll need to be a bit careful so I will just fast forward in the video and set up this schedule with uh, these different contracts and we'll show you what it looks like when it's finished Okay, so what you'll see now is we've been able to set up a really robust full schedule where we're using uh, most of our slots. We do only have an hour turnaround time, so we will need to upgrade our facilities in a moment. But uh, you can see here um, everything's staggered by 15 minutes, so we have uh, a good spread across the different landing slots. We've only got a few threes there where we're going to be a bit cloggy, uh, and we've left basically only a couple of little spots here on our five ramps so that looks pretty efficient to me uh, so now we'll need to just quickly go out and upgrade our facilities to make sure that we can handle all of these things um, so what we'll do is for our air cargo handling facility uh, i don't believe oh we have the better vehicle now so uh, we did research that before and you'll see it's got 20 uh, 20 spaces it also does move i think slightly faster uh, so you look at the, the base performance here so you see the base performance on the ZU500 is uh, 1.67 per minute whereas the base performance on the DMG10 is 2 per minute so this is loading time um, so uh, better vehicle so what we'll do is we will go ahead and sell these two we will upgrade our parking slots so we'll make it so that we have four uh, vehicles available here and then we will buy one two three four um, of these we're also going to put a, our boost on so one of our research items if we spend our 470 and then eight dollars an hour that will improve the turnaround time at the actual warehouse so we're going to turn that on as well um, so that should handle all our cargo needs and then here on the fuel barrel stock again i believe we have the better vehicle um, so again this now carries twice as much fuel and you can see um, uh, that'll make a big difference in terms of the amount of refueling we have to do so we're going to go ahead and sell the old vehicle and we will buy one two and then i think we'll open a further slot and buy a third vehicle uh, so hopefully that should be enough and then we'll turn the boost on to that as well so um i think that's a good spot to end the episode so we've now set up our um our schedule we've now set up our cargo handling we've got five uh, very full ramps with reasonably quick turnaround times that fill most of the slots on the runway with our air traffic control tower uh, it's only 1919 come 1920 so we haven't even gotten into passengers yet research is going at full speed so thank you very much for watching this let's play and hopefully that's given you some information on this game um, and also uh, how to start off um, a robust uh, fueling and air cargo service at the start of the game. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, um, and I will catch you in the next episode when we will show you how to set up a passenger service.